below there. Humans, bees, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm Bushka, and today we'll be talking about the Challenger. The Tier 7 Brick TD. It's the last one in the line to get reviewed, and uh, it's probably not an accident because I think it's easily the worst tank in the line. I'm going to break down why that is, and I want to talk about some of the constant theories and concepts that kind of drive the Blitz experience and the way we view tanks and the things that they do and the way balance is accrued. And I'm, I'm not even going to go to on the Smasher and the Drac and the Helsing and all that crap. I just want to talk about the way, for starters, TDs particularly um, work within the game. And, and I understand that the Challenger is a different and very odd tank for the Blitz guys to try and balance. But there's already a Challenger at Tier 7. It's called the Comet, and it has a 160 Alpha gun like this, but it has more DPM, and it has 12 degrees of gun depression, and it has more armor, and it has a lower profile, and that's what you should probably drive rather than this thing if you ever get a choice. Um, let's talk firstly about Alpha damage and rate of fire. On the left, we have rate of fire. On the right, we have Alpha damage. The bigger your Alpha, generally the slower your rate of fire is. And somewhere in the middle where the lines intersect is a kind of balance. Now, you'll get... Tanks that have great rate of fire but lower alpha, like the Tortoise, for instance, or the Yag Tiger, as they go up, and you'll get tanks with massive alpha and very, very slow rates of fire. And it's they try and keep the DPM down, but there's a bonus for having a higher rate of fire because there is also a negative. The faster your rate of fire, the more time you need to spend on a target, and the more exposed your tank is. So cue the Challenger. Challenger has two guns. One of them is a super high rate of fire uh, gun, which is your stock standard Comet style gun, your 160 Alpha 17 pounder. Uh, it's called a 75 millimeter uh, in, in other lines and stuff, but it's a 17 pounder here. And it has 2,714 DPM, which to be honest is middle of the road for a tier seven TD. The 25 and two, which has a 225 Alpha round has more dpm 2812 dpm than the challenger it also has a turret uh i mean and it's got more armor surprisingly than the challenger uh the challenger with its higher alpha gun it's 250 alpha bomber has 2226 dpm the only tank with less dpm than that at this tier is the the blaze in TDs, and that's got 2200 DPM, but it has a 400 alpha round. So it fires and then immediately pulls back and loses none of its efficiency from its DPM. The Challenger fires and with its higher damage round has to stay on the target because the only way it can apply its anemic DPM is by time on target, even with its higher alpha gun. And it just... I mean, I'm going to show you the armor profiles in a tick, and I'm going to talk you through the big issues I have with the armor profile. But suffice to say that damage output is poor across the tree uh, for this tank, either side, either gun. Um, you have crazy tanks at this tier that have 400 alpha guns and have as much DPM as a Challenger does with its 160 alpha gun that has to stay on target like it's firing to get that dpm you're firing 17 times a minute with a turret that has absolutely no armor that is an issue uh if the su-152 wants to do that with a 400 alpha round it can do three and a half thousand dpm a minute nearly uh the 12244 a premium <laughs> 2766 dpm same dpm 400 alpha round and it's got armor and, and stuff like this. The fact that this has a turret is not particularly helpful when it's not like it's a T30 where you are setting up a shot, taking a 640 alpha shot, and then pulling back. Because of the armor profile, you can set up your shot, take your shot, and you do 160 damage. And it's like, pfft, they just don't care. Now let me talk about the armor for a second. So here's what I really want to talk about. This is the armor profiles. Um, and this is the strongest turret. This is with the 160 alpha uh, gun that you can get the even with 10 degrees of gun depression looking down and you're only facing the comets penetration numbers here right which are very very low um it's only a, a t7 medium and that's what you deal with like that's the 160 alpha gun that compares to the comets gun uh but on an enormous turret if we swap those around you'll see what i mean by how stupid the turrets are on these tanks that's the comets 
turret. Like, why is it okay for a tier 7 medium with more DPM than the tier 7 TD that it's uh, partnered with there to have a profile that is so abundantly lower and have far more armor? And then if it angles up like this, because it's got 12 degrees of gun depression, all you're really seeing is this tiny slither of armor either side of a very small turret and a very tough to hit uh, top area there, which is still, that's 120, 118 millimeters. Let's swap these back. I mean, there is nowhere on this that is really a trouble. There's two tiny little areas there that are red through some happenstance. Let's have a look at the 250 Alpha turret, the Avenger turret. This is just ludicrous, hey? Whoops, i got to save that. Uh, okay. I, I'm baffled. How you can introduce tanks like the Object 252U and that kind of armor profile, but tanks like the Challenger have to, for some reason, have this enormous weak point across the top. Like, what the hell is that for? What the hell is that entire area on top for? You know what it's for? It's for smashes to hit you with 1,000 damage. HE shells through your 16 millimeter weak point. Now, on tanks like the... I've whinged about this often enough in the past. Let's have a look at the Type 61. The Type 61 has this enormous 57 millimeter weak point on top for no apparent reason. Like, there is no reason that's that's there. It's not like the, the tank is blatantly overpowered that it needs this stupid sub 100 millimeter weak point. But they've gone a step further with the... Uh, with the Challenger, and you don't just have the hatch, it covers the entire top of your turret. The entire top of the turret is a 16mm weak point if you run the gun that is 250 alpha and is the lowest, basically lowest DPM TD in its tier and doesn't have big alpha, so it has to spend a lot of time on target exposing its enormous armor. Like, you've got freaking... 60 millimeters of armor on your upper glacis. 51 millimeters on the front of your turret. 46 on the sides. Baffled. And it's interesting to me that after playing a lot of tanks lately, uh, British TDs, like for instance, um, yesterday I played an arsehole of brick TDs, because I really wanted to get a feel for this line before I did this review, because I felt like I was not doing it right. Um, and... Like, I played 33 battles in the Chariot, and Charioteer. It's amazing. 2300 average damage, 73% win rate. 33 battles, pretty much solo the whole day. I only platoon very, very rarely. I played 13 battles in this at 1560 average damage and 38% win rate. And... It's because you just can't really output enough damage in this tank. It's a TD that doesn't really intimidate or threaten. You can only do damage by vampiring off the hit points of others. Your armor profile is so weak that as soon as you become the focus of a team, you are so screwed. Like, you are absolutely diabolically wrecked. The one thing it has going for it is it's quite quick. Uh, and that mobility is lovely, but I drive a drive a 20, 25 and 2. Like, at least then you are getting some DPM with that alpha. Uh, or, in fact, I would much rather drive a Comet. A Comet will give you so much more ability to affect change in the enemy team's lineup, its formations. Uh, it'll drive people back. It's more mobile in terms of traverse. Uh, and it's got two degrees more gun depression, which means you can get insane looks going on. You are just constantly in this thing, even as someone who's got a lot of experience playing, constantly giving ground. And then you can't really punish them when they push through because, I mean, it's got good pen, like, I'll give it that. But, wow, everything you fire goes in. I mean, everything you fire goes in. It's, or fire at you, rather, goes in. And... Smashes, SU-152s, any, any tank in the game with a HE shell will pen through the top of your turret. So if you're looking to become a ridgeline fighter, think again, because anyone can just fire HE at the top of this tank and literally just tear you apart. And even though 
in the perfect situation, like where you are just corner fighting at range with a decent gun and decent alpha, and you're out maneuvering, out maneuvering the enemy, and like, every shot that goes near you is going to go in. There is nothing that you have that won't get pinned, uh, and that's disappointing because I just. The game has changed to the point now where there are so many sharks in the water, there are so many monsters in the deep, and Wargaming have basically given you a pair of floaties and said, go learn to swim. And you don't have, um, if you are not a very experienced tank, like as an experienced player, this tank is an incredibly difficult drive. And it is 100% reliant on team. Like you are not going to have those moments where you just completely outthink the other guy and get a lucky bounce and then go through. Because, I mean, look at the blaze there. He's pulled back around that corner. I'm, I'm so... I know that this, this is horrible. Watch this. There is a KV-2 over there. He's going to come up unspotted. Uh, I'm going to think like I can get away with this. This is where I first realized that the top of this hatch is so, so bad. Uh, let's have a look at this. In fact, I'll, I'll slow it down in just a second. And there are so many tanks like this out there. Like, And when you play against Tier 8 heavies, like every Tier 8 heavy you seem to come up against has a 400 alpha 120 millimeter gun. And that means that their HE rounds will just go... All they have to do is aim at your gun. Watch my hit point pull here. All he can see is a top. He just fires HE at the top. It takes out my gun. It takes out everything. It takes all of my modules... It takes out all my hit point pull. And then I get hit in the top of the turret by an SP-1C. Again, the top of the turret. That's your turret. That's meant to be, you know, the, the thing that you're exposing as you take shots. What it does do is, because it has a turret, it can, you know, leverage that into moments against people that really don't pay much attention and get kind of COD games going on. Just drive a freaking comment. I mean... I, there is no, I would rate this as, I can't think of any other TD I'd want to play less at this tier if my life depended on it. Um, there are, you know, the only reason I lived through this second tank is because that is a challenger who is running the higher alpha 250 alpha gun. So I know that he's just got absolutely god awful DPM and that he's got no way around actually dealing with the 2700 dpm i've got i've got like a 600 damage per minute advantage on him and i'm just going to win because he has you know not enough alpha to get through and not enough dpm to get through so and it's it's kind of an indictment on the fact that 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 gun is so much worse in terms of output than this 160 alpha gun so yeah this is a bad tank it's a bad tank in a tier that is chock full of freaking monster tanks. Uh, there's... I mean, just in terms of the pure standard tanks in this tree that are better than you, I think the T25 and 2, which has 225 alpha, that's got 2800 DPM. Um, so it's quite capable of outputting at least a modicum of damage and intimidating an enemy line while maintaining distance and doesn't have to do a whole lot for it the 160 alpha gun on the challenger is exceptionally accurate and it's got good penetration but man you pay for all that with anemic anemic armor profile and no ability to bounce a shot uh, it, it's crazy the helsing will tear you limb from limb the t34 uh 2 gft the su 12244 these are all tanks that are a drive over this the e25 the I mean, I prefer the Stubborn Emil than this because the Stubborn Emil, while it doesn't have any particular armor, has hilarious, you know, has hilarious gun depression and is a lot of fun. The Yag Panther has two guns that are both, I believe, far more uh, interesting than, than this tank. And then you, that's without even talking about the stupid tanks at this tier, like the idiotic tanks at this tier, like the Smasher. Um, Tankenstein's a better tank than this. The, you know, tanks that you are going to come up against and have to deal with. Black Princes and Lupuses and Namelesses and Tiger P's and MLE 45s. It's not like there aren't freaking amazing tanks out there that are just going to absolutely rip you apart. And then you deal with the guys that 
pop up as mediums like the Drac, the Comet, the T3485 Rudy. They, they're going to feast on you. Don't even start with when you get up tiered against T49s and things at tier 8 and Object 252Us and IS5s and Christ like caves. It's just insane. So I think this tank is going to get buffed out the yin yang in the not too distant future. I mean, I think it's it's so obviously an inferior vehicle, and it's it's so hard to carry in a tank that can't bounce a shot. And every time you fire and give away your position, you have to reset your camo for ten seconds. And when you're reliant on you know firing your gun every you know what is it three and a half seconds like you've got to fire every three and a half seconds to maintain your damage i'm bushka look after yourselves and as always stay safe on the battlefield but you get to the charioteer and that's amazing